Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Soulless by Gail Carriger. Uh, this is one of the Alexia Tarabotti series, the Parasol Protector, I think it's called. Uh, I read this because my other half, Susie, she read this and enjoyed it, and she was talking about it. And then we did a, we, we, we were shooting a booktube video for our Lord Literature and Madam Media channel, where uh, we're swapping TBRs. So she's going to read Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton, which is on my TBR, and I've read this one from hers. So as always, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check some of my tabs and share my overall thoughts rating at the end. So, Alexia Tarabotti is labouring under a great many social tribulations. First, she has no soul. Second, she's a spinster whose father is both Italian and dead. Third, she was rudely attacked by a vampire, breaking all standards of social etiquette. Where to go from there? From bad to worse, apparently, for Alexia accidentally kills the vampire, and then the appalling Lord Macon, loud, messy, gorgeous and werewolf, is sent by Queen Victoria to investigate. With unexpected vampires appearing and expected vampires disappearing, everyone seems to believe Alexia is responsible. Can she figure out what is actually happening to London's high society? Will her soulless ability to negate supernatural powers prove useful or just plain embarrassing? Finally, who is the real enemy and do they have a tree called Tar? So, a few thoughts to begin with. I mean, I was expecting it to be a lot more steampunk than it was, um, so I think maybe I've been oversold on that, although I'm, I hear it may get more steampunky in the later books but I'm probably not going to get to them. Um, so, I mean, what it did really well was like the, the politics between, um, you know, the vampires and the werewolves and the clans and all that kind of stuff, as well as like the societal stuff of like expectations. Um, but I didn't really feel as though I was in Victoria and England from the, um, like from the descriptive part of things or from the actual action in the story. I felt like that could have pl taken place anywhere. Although the social mores were very uh, Victorian. Um, other stuff as well, she did a lot of head hopping in this, so she'd be talking about Alexia and be like, oh, I wonder, what she, Alexia's wondering what Lord Macon thinks, and then we just hop into Lord Macon's head and see it straight away in like the same scene, sometimes in the paragraph afterwards, and I just found that really jarring. I also found her writing style quite jarring to begin with, but I sort of settled into it after about 30 pages, and after that we were all right. So tabby tap tap taps. Oh, one thing that really annoyed me right at the beginning. It says the parasol protector at book the first, and I just think that's really wanky and pretentious. <laughs> Get little bits like this. Uh, but you're a woman, objected Miss Hesselpenny, shocked. An even more well-known fact about drones or clavagers was that they tended to be male. Women were much less likely to survive being turned. No one knew why, though scientists suggested the female's weaker constitution. Yeah, that sounds like scientists. I'm not being sarcastic, that does sound like scientists. They do that a lot. We get, uh, Alexia tried to explain that the vampire's supposed inability to enter private residences uninvited was a myth based upon their collective obsession with proper social etiquette. Which I think is a nice little explanation. I do like different uh, vampire lore used in different ways. We get, uh, Lord Akodema received no nourishment from the consumption of food, but he appreciated the tastes. I'm almost the other way around. I forced myself to eat just because I need to eat. We get a description of this character that proves to be quite important later on. It's sort of not really human. And uh, here was a man who watched the world without blinking, yet somehow refrained from looking directly at anything. I think we've all known people like that. Yeah, this is one of the bits that annoyed me. Just when she felt there was no more hope and she was in Im imminent danger of succumbing to the fumes, there came an unexpected noise. One designed, Miss Tarabotti suspected, by this newfangled concept of evolution to chill the bones of mankind. Mate. Evolution isn't intelligent design, they're different things. Evolution doesn't design anything, things just happen. Which is more terrifying. <laughs> oh, and then there's some talk of someone doing an experiment to measure souls. And I assume that's based on the very real experiment that happened where someone basically got people who were terminally ill and lay them down on these beds that had scales in them. And he did find like the average human body loses like 25 grams of weight at the time of death. But I think they were super inaccurate scales, so you know. We get a note that the vampires sided with the Confederates in the American War of Independence. We actually get a few mentions for the American War of Independence. I thought this, this combination of lines was quite good. It was as though he were trying to speak to her with simply the power of a glare. Alexia did not speak glarish. We get this, uh, how did that saying go, Alexia wondered. Ah yes, brash as an American. Well, they had won their independence somehow, and it was not with politeness. But really, that's all I've got to share with you about this one. It was an okay little read. Uh, I thought the world building and the politics was quite good, but I was a little bit let down by how not steampunky it was. Don't go into it thinking it's particularly steampunky because it's not. It's vampires and werewolves in Victorian England, basically. Um, the writing style is sometimes a bit overdone as well, but I did find that I got quite used to it. I mean, if this was my thing, I'm sure I could continue reading the series. I just have no pressing uh, urge to. But I thought it was alright. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. 
So there you have it, that's what I made of Soulless by Gail Carragher. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.